have a, a small conversation of all the great things he's done today. And uh, it gives me more than a great pleasure because I know him personally. And he's a great friend of mine. So let's, let's go to Eddie. Eddie, oh, the production that we, we're having here is today is the ARM 1555 production, Comcast 95, Verizon 36. All right, so let's go to Eddie. Now, Eddie. Hello. My man, how you doing, man? Very good, very you good, Look good, Johnny. man. Johnny, look at you, man. I'm trying to be like I'm you, man. I'm trying to be like all of us. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, um, uh, I, I want to ask you a couple questions about your, your past and all the great things you've done that people around the, the area of Richmond, Virginia, don't know about, or the world doesn't know about. Well, most of the world knows, but <laughs> Richmond doesn't know. Okay. So we're going to let, let Richmond in on a secret. Okay. Is that good? That's good all to right, me. So I, like it. Is, I like it. All right, so I'm going to ask you right from the, right from the front. Mm -hmm. All right, so where are you born? I was born in Richmond, Virginia, mm -hmm. back in 1942, way back in the day. That is in the day. Yeah, that is back there, man. Okay. So it, was, it was good. And then I went from there uh, to Inglewood, New Jersey, okay. where I went to school, high school, and so forth. And I went to school with, uh, with uh, Natalie Cole. You Natalie? Know? Yeah, went to school with Natalie Cole. She used to come up to the school. Her dad used to drive her to school every day. Nat King Cole used to drive her. And uh, she'd come up and get out of the, uh, out of the uh, Rolls Royce. And uh, all the kids would rush up to her and uh, carry her books into the school and everything. And uh, I saw Natalie, and I was like, why is Natalie King Cole? You know, so one, one day I got brave enough. He called me, and I got brave enough to walk over to his car and talk to Natalie. So after that day, every time he would drop her off, he would beckon me to come over and, and encourage me. And really, I believe that's one of his big encouragements in my musical career, the fact that Nat King Cole uh, encouraged me. He talked, wow. to me. he talked to me very, very straight. You know, that is deep. It was very deep, man. All right, um, mm -hmm. I know you went to school in, in Jersey and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So from, from that, where do, you, where do you venture to after that? Well, from, from Jersey, I wound up going into the Air Force. Okay. And the Air Force uh, took me uh, to California. Okay. Where I met up with, um, with the Gentiles, a, a, a sort of a surfing group. Okay. At that time, it was 1960 when all the surfing stuff was taking on. It was Dick Dale was doing good with his da 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 you know, the surfing thing, you know, yeah. and the and the, and the and the movies and stuff. He was doing all that kind of stuff. And also the Beach Boys were getting hot, right? Right. So I did a show with, with Joe Pass, of all people. Wow. Joe Pass. I didn't even know who he was. And uh, we was in a music store that I was teaching, actually. I was teaching a music store. Uh -huh. And he was one of the uh, celebrities they asked to come in once a month to, to play. And I was, had the opportunity to play with Joe Pass. So in the audience was uh, these young fellas. And at the end of the evening, they came up to me and said, would you like to join a band? And I said, well, no, I don't join bands. I really don't. I don't have, I can't right, do it. Right. And they said to me, well, we're the Gentiles. So I said, do I start tonight or tomorrow morning? <laughs> 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 you know? And so, I mean, I was. I was a member of the Gentiles. We traveled and, and did the whole thing. I got to meet their how long, dad. How long were you with the Gentiles? I was with them about a year. That's how long I, I was able to stay in California. Okay. Okay, so we, we did all the traveling and we hanging out with the Beach Boys. And one day uh, up on the mountaintop, the Beach Boys were playing we were together. And myself and Carl, the guitar player, we were tight like that, right? Right. And uh, Carl was talking to me and he said, this is going to be my one. I'm going to sign the autograph. I said, oh, I'll go because we were doing like that, with right, our, right. You know, he's no, no, no. I got this one. You know, he's not even told. That's where we were. So in the end, um, what happened while we were doing that? He looked up on the stage and he happened to see this huge amplifier. Well, Fender had given me one of Chet Atkins' custom-made amplifiers. I don't even want to ask you. Do you still have it? <laughs> no way. It's been stolen years ago. Oh, <laughs> painful, man. Yeah. I'll grab for you. Yeah. It was the only two in the world at the time wow. of the dual showman. Fender wow. amps. They had made them for Chet. One for, it sent to him in Tennessee, and he was supposed to do a, a tour in, uh, in California. Mm -hmm. And they said, do you want it? I went like, uh, yeah. <laughs> and so when Carl saw this amp on the stage, and he said, what is that? So we like, no, Carl, no, you can't touch my amp, man. It was right, like right. that. So Carl said, please, man, let me touch it. I said, no, man, come on, man. He said, I'll let you play my guitar. He had a Fender, obviously. Mm -hmm. So I said, oh, okay. I had tons of Fenders. But I said, okay, then. So I'm on the stage playing Carl's guitar from the Beach Boys right. in front of the Beach Boys. Can you imagine it? That's, I that's amazing. It went, I didn't think of it at the time, surfing board, all that stuff. I'm playing that same guitar. So, so that was in the early 60s, right? Yes, it was. So that's, segregation was just playing a part during that time, wasn't it? It was. Okay, so mm -hmm. how, do, how do you fit in with that? 
it was pretty amazing actually now in the whole uh, uh, beachcomber scene right I was basically the only black person in that idiom Wow you know what I'm saying I was wondering yeah, about that yeah I was the only one out there and, and I was just accepted just like everybody else. I didn't have any problems. No problems at all? No problems. And once in a while you wanted to do a little something, something. But I was able to blow that away. Right. And there I was with the Beach Boys, Dick Dale, you name them. There's out in, in the surfing music, you know, time. And I was out there. I was the only one out there. But I didn't think of it. Now, I know you play with, you know, around and with the Beach Boys and stuff like that. Now, tell us, because we need to know. Okay. There are this super group. Oh, okay. I, I ain't gonna call no names because you know who it is. Because <laughs> we already know who it who is. is. Okay. So we want you to tell us, okay. right, right, all right, who okay. that is super it? group is. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm gonna tell you how I got to get to the super group. So I ha also had an opportunity to play with the coasters. Okay. Yeah. And that was really great. Oh, man, I enjoyed them. I used to watch them at the Apollo, and I finally went up here playing with them. Tell me about Apollo. The Apollo Theater. During in, that time, though. Uh, during that time. During that, actually, it was the only like, two places that we had the opportunity to uh, perform at. The Apollo right. and I think uh, it was like another large theater downtown. Okay. And at the Apollo, you had James Brown, you, you had Jackie Wilson, you had everybody, you know, everybody was doing their thing in there. Right. And the coasters were big, man. The yak, the yak, don't talk back, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And I used to well, look at them up there, right? So when I was in California, they came out, and I don't know how I got the gig, you know, but somehow people suggested that I was a guitarist. And I, be, and I joined the coasters. So what happens? I roll up on the bass. Here we go with the president's thing. I roll up on the bass one day with this brand new Cadillac. And this warrant officer says, where did you get that Cadillac? I said, we got it at the store. Right? So he said, okay. So next thing you know, two weeks later, I had orders to go to Turkey. Right. Okay, so I had to leave the Cadillac in the murk. I had to leave it out to sell it. Mm -hmm. You know, so that was the start of that. But I was going in there all depressed thinking, oh, God, I'm going to Turkey and this is going to be bad for me. But when I got to Turkey, I still did good because in Turkey they had heard of the Gentiles. So there I was, I did shows in Turkey. Wow. I played for the premiere of Turkey by name. He asked me by name. So you know the base commander was happy about that. Oh, yeah. So I started getting some good deals. And then I formulated a band while I was in Turkey with some of the other musicians. And uh, what happened, we wound up uh, um, competing in the U.S. Uh, Air Force uh, music competition okay. worldwide. Okay. So I represented the bass, right? Then the bass competed with the other basses in Turkey and won all that. Then I represented Turkey. Wow. And went to Athens, Greece, where people who represented Germany, England, France, different countries, and we all competed there, right? Right. So the bass commander gave me his Learjet to use. His what jet? Learjet to use to take the boys to Athens, Greece, the bass commander. He said, now look at it. My, my plane, you're in charge of it. I have never been in charge of a Learjet. That's amazing <laughs> how to put a, a black man in charge of a Learjet. And, no, a Learjet. And, that was the, and here's the funny thing. When we got, when we got to uh, Athens, right? Right. <clears throat> Learjet pulls up. It's a general's plane. So what they do to get the honor guard to come, right? And the guys are standing with their silver helmets waiting. And I see this general get off the plane. So my boys got off, you know, all the musicians, they're, all, they're waving and everything. They're waiting, they're waiting. Who, who's this general? They're trying to look. So here I go, I, then I pop up and I played it, man. You played it I, again? I played it. That's how you <laughs> do it, though, man. That's how you do it, brother. I played it, man. I popped the door open and walk out, and they like, because I was about like 20, 22 years old, you know. Young and good young. looking. <laughs> young, tall and good looking. Oh, no. Tall, dark, and handsome. Yeah, okay. I think that's the word. All right, you. okay. Right. So what happened? I go in there and I saluted them on the way. They don't know what's going on. Like, wow, Lear Jet, the dude, you know, it's got to be something. Saluted and went on in, and the same thing going back. And the guys were so ecstatic. So we didn't win first place, you know, the first day, right? The old band members said, oh, God, you got to blah, blah. Right. We were supposed to win the first place. So what happened? The judge didn't like it. You know what I'm saying? So I said, okay. So we got together on the next day. said, so we're going to win this thing. I, okay. I got this Lear Jet sitting at the general, blah, blah, blah. And so, so we got together and came up on the stage, it's a mixed band. There's a, there's a black guy playing the drums, a white guy playing the bass, a white guy playing the other rhythm guitar, and me playing the lead guitar and singing. So I go, 
Last night I tried to sleep, little or city, ding, 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 ding. I dreamed about the cotton field back home. <laughs> and it was all clever. So we took home the prize. No! That was <laughs> awesome, man. You know? But I'm still excited. You gotta tell me who <laughs> this supergroup is. Okay. All right, tell us, all right. tell the world, because we're waiting. We're okay. all standing here waiting. We're waiting, right? We're waiting for the Super Bowl. Okay. So I get to England after my tour in Turkey. Okay. And I wind up, uh, I set up a factory. I was, uh, what kind of factory? A guitar making factory. I made guitars. You made guitars? I made guitars. Okay. All right. So no, that's my they, thing too, you know. I know. That's right. Some beautiful basses and guitars Thank you, you make. Sir. Thank you, sir. Excellent. I love them. Everybody talking about them. Thank man. you, sir. Yes, Thank indeed. you. Yes, indeed. It's probably one there, is it? No, but I know you no, worked. No, no, this, this I know somebody you, else's. I, I know, but <laughs> <laughs> I know you worked on it. I know. Yeah, that. you know I worked on yes. it. Yes. So what happened? Uh, because it was not everybody making guitars, you right. know, and everything, and people like some of the rock stars were buying my guitars, so it made a little noise. Like who? Like who? Give well, me a name. Let me see. Shoot me a name. It wasn't that. It wasn't a who yet. Yeah, anybody like that. But some of the like the, uh, the pretty, the pretty things, mm -hmm. and uh, I can't remember all the names. But the local okay. guys, okay. right? But they and were selling. They That's were what selling. Mattered. Yeah, they were very much so. Okay. okay. They had the business for eight years. Okay. So anyway, so in the meantime, someone decided, you know what? Let's put you on the television, on the telly. On the telly. On the telly. So they put me up on the telly. And I demonstrated my guitars, and I, and I played uh, Joe Bass uh, from Buddy Rich, the bass player with Buddy Rich, right. was in the studio, and he said, can I play with you? I said, I don't know, man, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> played it all real Yeah, good. played it all. So Joe Bass played the bass, and the musical director of the studio played keyboard. So wow. I had a guitar, bass, and keyboard, no drums. And I played a couple of songs and things and so forth, and did the show. You know what I'm thinking? That was good. Everybody said, wow, I turned on the TV. That was nice. We saw you on the, t on the telly. And two weeks later, knock, knock, knock on a Sunday afternoon. Never forget it. Sunday afternoon at 9.30 at night. I thought, like, who is that knocking on the door? So I opened the door, and there's a fellow there with a bowler hat, striped suit, and a briefcase. He says, your name is Eddie Jones? I said, yes. He says, uh, John Entwistle wants you to join his band. I'm like, what? you got to be kidding me. What are you selling in that band? He said, no. Before see, you move, go on, right? Let people know who that is. Okay. I, I know who it is because I'm a bass player. Mm. And every bass player in the world knows who he is. Okay. Ed Whistle. All right, now Ed you Whistle. tell people who okay. he is. Okay. Well, John Ed Whistle is the bass player of The Who. That, that's the key right there. All right. That's it. The Who. The rock group from England that plays all, you know, uh, Tommy and everything else like that. Right. You know, who are you? Doop, 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 doop. doop. all mm. of that. Yeah, that's The Who. So anyway, so it goes down. This is so cute. I go down to uh, the um, it's a Chinese uh, restaurant, a Japanese steakhouse in London. I'm like, wow, this is going to be shaky. So that's to meet John. That was the arrangement the next day. Right. So this it is now. The who's, you know, is the who. Right. I walk into the uh, restaurant, and there's a coffin. So I'm like, oh, okay, I think, now who ate the sushi in here? What happened to him? You know? so, <laughs> so I see this coffin in there. So I'm getting ready to leave, and the lady sits up in the coffin. Oh, that's the big one. So she said, may I help you? So Curiosity towed the cat up. You know, so, you know, right so, out the box. Right out the box. Just towed the cat up. So anyway, so Curiosity got me. I said, well, I'm Eddie Jones. Oh, hey. She started getting out this coffin. I'm like, this is definitely the big one, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, she walked me over to these two really large doors right. and just stood there for a minute with this grin all the way back here. So I'm like, open the door. Like, what's gonna she just standing there grinning. So finally she opened the door and I looked inside and there was everybody that I could not afford to buy tickets to their shows that's in there. Now tell me. That? Tell me. Okay. Tell Eric me. Clapton, uh, uh, um, uh, with the piano, his name? Uh, uh, I can't think Richard of Richard wasn't in there, was he? No, Lou Richard wasn't in there. Okay. Uh, no. Now tell me how everybody. you felt when that door popped open. I actually pinched myself. You see where you actually there? Was right? I really alive? Is this a dream? Right. I'm not kidding. It's everybody, you know, Elton John, you name them, it's all in there, man. All these friends, you know. And I like wow. from one thing to another thing. So I walks in and they all like, Eddie. They already knew I was coming. Had my name out, everything. Eddie. So I walk in there. So everything was you met everybody. And there's this big, huge walk in there. We're all set around this walk, this heating heated um, facility. And the guy comes over and he leans over and he does the food and everything and everybody around. So now I'm sitting right across from Entwistle, right? John Entwistle. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm eating ever so carefully, you know, everybody, Eric Clapton down there, you know, everybody's in there, you know, I'm eating ever so you carefully. You try to be poised. Try to be poised, uh. right? And as I'm taking up my foot to my mouth, I looked up and John is like watching me right straight up. And I'm, and, and you know, so I am like, and every time I do it, so that was the beginning of me and John, right? Right. And so I got through that. And next thing he says, hey, uh, why don't you come over to the house tomorrow? It's the who? Dude, come over the house. So I said, like, I can do that. So where I was living was like 65 miles away. I had to catch a train to Ealing, where he lived in, in England. Mm -hmm. So I get to Ealing, and I step out in front of the place, and there's a, a Citroen Maserati sitting there with a the chauffeur. As I walk out the door, he said, are you Edward? I said, oh, yes, I'm he. So I said, like, oh, you're a little late. Oh, you know, I planned it, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I get in this Citroen Maserati, and we go to the mansion. So I see John in there, and everything's so cool. He introduced me to his, to his wife, his little boy, and his dog, mm -hmm. Hamish. Okay? Wow. The dog is famous. He was in the movie, And of a Thousand Days. Wow. See, everybody, so everybody's I mean, famous. Everybody's famous. So we even sat, the dirt on the floor is even famous. Even the dirt on the floor is famous. <laughs> <laughs> These people pay for some. The dirt is on the, the floor. On the floor is famous. Famous. So what happened? He said, well, come on upstairs. I'm like, why are we going upstairs? So anyway, curiosity again. again. So I go upstairs. Then he stood at this door, grinning like this girl did. So I'm like, okay, what's on this door? So he opened the door, and it was the most fantastic recording studio I'd ever seen. And it was in his house. Wow. It was beautiful, man. Millions of dollars of stuff. So we go in there, and I'm nervous like, man, and we're sitting around. He said, go pick up a uh, guitar and play it. So I picked up a couple of guitars from hanging off the wall and was playing them. He said, why don't you try that one right there? I said, okay. So it was a Gretsch guitar, so I picked up, I'm playing it. And as I'm playing, he said, that guitar there, I got that from Pete Townsend. It was, it was one that he made my generation out of it. The first song they ever made that made wow. them the Who. That's the most famous guitar in the world, I'm holding it. So I'm like, okay, I'll put this back, you know. Then he said, why don't you try the bass? And here is John it was so I'm going to try the bass, right? So I said, okay, whatever. So I get the bass and I'm kicking it, you know. Was I, 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 I wasn't like you, man, but I was doing it. I was well, kicking you, you it. Probably yeah. felt like I felt when I picked up, <laughs> listen, you, you probably felt like I felt when I picked up uh, Stan Lee's Clark bass. Oh, it was playing his bass. Oh, wow. I was blown away. Oh, right, but go on and tell you story. Man. Okay, that's you. you. Anyway, we got no, no, story, no, no, I want to talk to you Woo! about this stuff, yes, too. Lord. Yes, Lord. All right, go ahead. So anyway, so he didn't say anything. I went on home. Well, oh, thank you very much. I'll see you. Bye-bye. That was it. I thought, well, that was, that was nice to do, you know. Right. Two weeks later, they called me up. I'm at my little workshop. Eddie, John wants you to join the band. I went, what? And that was it. That was the start. All right, so tell me some of the, the, the venues you guys hit. Well, we with been, you on stage. Because a lot of yeah. people... Well, so, you know, infatuated with the Who, they really didn't know that there was a black Who sitting on stage also. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, that's what you were. And so we, you know, even me, I mean, I went back and looked at some of your videos, man. I was like, whoa, you know what? When I was looking on TV, I didn't really look to uh -huh. see where you were up there. And you now know? that I do, I'm like, he's right there. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh -huh. So, yeah. so tell me some of the venues you guys Well, hit. we did. I didn't go out of um, England, basically. Mm -hmm. Maybe just a little bit with some of the countries around. But basically, we performed in England around. So he, okay, he, he okay. Rick Mortis, he did that. And uh, I got the chance to meet just about everybody. Eric Clapton on down, you know, right. all, everybody. It was, just, it was just a fun life, you know. We did the movie. Uh, we did the movie Rick and Mortis, Sets In, and, uh, and, and went on from there. Then uh, The Who... Well, John was free at that time to do this because the Tommy uh, uh, the record had been made, Tommy. Right. And Pete Townsend had gone off kind of like he he couldn't create anymore, so he went off like away somewhere, and um, so they were all free and wondering what to do. And so what happened when they came back together and they made this movie, then who got back, really got back together? Right. So down there, down I don't know anything about the movie. I get this phone call. And I got my business going, and John says, uh, Eddie, we want you to be in the movie, Rigor Mortis. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, uh, uh, um, so. So let, let, let's, let's wrap this thing up. Okay. All right, so basically we know that you're famous. And oh. you live right here in Richmond, Virginia. Okay. All right? Okay. Now, after this, this segment we, we're doing right here, we gonna, you and I, mm -hmm. and, and, a, and a secret drummer, is going to do some songs. Right. And people get a chance to hear you play. Okay. So um, right now, we go, We want to say thank you, you guys, for um, mm -hmm. checking out the show. The show is really amazing. We'd like to thank um, um, Arms 1555 Production for allowing us to come here 
and, mm -hmm. and show the doctor. <laughs> okay. and, and I want to thank the doctor for allowing me to interview the doctor. <laughs> Mr. Long. Uh, my name is Johnny Lee Long. Mm -hmm.
She's got a leg shaped like the leg of a chair. But when it comes to dancing, no one can compare. Hey, play penny, she really knows how to hop. She really knows how to hop. She really knows how to hop. You think her face is gonna split in two Same as four part of harmony while she's kissing you White mouth winning, she really knows how to kiss ya She really knows how to kiss ya She really knows how to kiss ya When it comes to kissing, she's an ace But make sure you don't get lifted all over your face White mouth winning, she really knows how to kiss
pull yeah. this thing out right. Um, we saw Eddie play his uh, brand yeah. new guitar oh, that yeah. Tommy Rodriguez made, yes, yes, which he lives did. here in Richmond. Well, mm -hmm. he's a he wasn't in Richmond. Was he He's still in Virginia, though. In Virginia. That's all I'm I about. also had a guitar Tommy made with me, but wow. let's just talk about your guitar. Okay, well, about a year ago, okay, okay. I was commissioned Tommy uh, through some help okay. to make this really, really nice guitar. Okay. And uh, what he had done, uh, he had gotten some wood from a house that was 300 years old. Awesome. So that, you know, he used this wood on my guitar. The first one he used, on my, the first time he used the wood on my guitar. So that was like ebony fingerboard, mm -hmm. mahogany neck, mahogany back, and uh, maple top. What kind of pickups in it? And he, uh, Lindy Freeland. Lindy Freeland. Lindy Freeland. Lindy Freeland. Lindy. That's right. Lindy around the corner there. And Lindy Freeland. Little Laverne Avenue. That's my favorite yeah, guy. Yeah, that was man. He's he's awesome. The he's good, awesome. That, you heard the pickups. You heard the, the sound. The guitar sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you. Um, we just love that you came here today and, and spent some time with us. Man, you're like awesome, dude. <laughs> no, you're like a frontierman for us, oh, us young man. cats. I just want to say for everybody, um, thank you for watching the show. We hope you guys check us, check us out again. We're coming back again to do some more stuff maybe yes, in the future. In the future. Okay, awesome. All right. You and I okay. and some more people. Some more. Right. And uh, I just want to say okay. thanks again. Okay. Have a great day. Have a great evening. Mm -hmm. The doctor is in the house. <laughs> the doctor is in the house. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, man. <laughs> thank you, man. Oh, yeah.